Welcome to the USATG Scale Group first how-to video. Today we are going to cover on how to change uh, axles and sliders on USA Trains two axle motor blocks. Uh, these two axle motor blocks will include the F3, the GP9, the GP30, and the GP38-2. They all take the same motor block and the same axles. As you can see, I got a homemade cradle. That's going to be the first thing you're going to need um, to hold your locomotive so you can properly work on it because you got to work on it upside down. You don't want to damage it. So, this cradle was made from basically junk parts. Um, I'll break it down and show it to you. As you can see, I made the cradle from scrap shelving wood and then I put. Uh, uh, bubble wrap inside there and built up a cushion with bubble wrap that was just coming shipping. I just saved it aside. Then I had an old bed sheet that was uh, still good for uh, using as uh, a protection. Okay, we got our USA Trains GP9 safely cradled and we're ready to work on it. Uh, the only tool you're going to need in this case will be a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, number two. Uh, number three might do, but preferably number two Phillips head. Alright, we have a close up of the USA Trains GP9. And like I said, the GP9, GP30, GP38 2, and F3 all use the same exact motor block. So whatever I'm doing to the GP9 will apply to these locomotives as well. Uh, maintenance is one of the very important things of your USA Trains locomotives. I recommend using uh, a light lubricant and take the motor block cover apart, which I'll show you how to do. Get it back together and what type of lube I recommend. Alright, so whether you want to inspect or lube your motor block or if you want to replace the sliders or the axles, all this will apply. There are six Phillips head screws you need to take out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to remove all six of these screws and take this cover off right here. All right, I removed the six screws. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cover. So you can see the the USA trains relies on a couple things for contact. You have the two sliders, and then those sliders provide also provide power via these. Uh, uh, rods here to the axles. The axles are also conductive with the exception of the traction tire axle. So you got two different types of axles. You got a non-traction tire axle and a traction tire axle. Now at this point you can go ahead and replace the sliders if you wish. They just merely pull out just like that. No big deal. Nothing else holds them in. As you can see, this one's got quite a bit of wear. I should probably replace it while I have it out, but I'm not going to. Um, I've worn them down a lot further than that, and they still make contact. But I'm just showing you how easy it is once you get the cover off. There's a little spring inside the slider. 
you can easily and accidentally knock that out. If you do and you put it in without the spring, what will happen is there won't be no tension uh, on the slider to your track. And putting it in is just as simple as I took it out. And as you can see, test it out, make sure the spring is working properly. Once again, now at this point in time, um, we got our sliders back in. If you want to replace them, that's fine. Now, if you want to leave them out, you can take these sliders out. Some people don't like them. Uh, they think it distracts from the looks of the locomotive, and they claim about the, them catching on a track and switches. I don't have such issues. But, if you decide to remove the slider, you have to change out the traction tire with a non-traction tire because you're actually taking points of contact away from the locomotive. So if you don't change the traction tire over to a non-traction tire axle, you will lose two points of contact and um, reduce liability of your, or reduce reliability of your USC trains locomotive. All right, so at this point in time, we want to lube it up. Um, this is the grease I use. It's a light, very light grease, but I'm not going to grease it up now because I'm going to go ahead and show you how to replace the axles. And then USA Trains also recommends uh, using a light, oil at points of contact for where your spindles are at. So you're supposed to be putting oil uh, let me see if I can rotate this down. There you go. You're supposed to be putting oil in here, 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 and here where the spindles go inside the trucks. There are little bronze bushings in there. And if you don't oil them up you'll, you'll uh, wipe out the bushings and then you'll have a lot of slop in your trucks and then you're replacing the truck side frames and that's not something you want to do. Uh, I recommend every every 50 hours of use to lube these up every 150 hours, 125 hours of use to regrease your uh, gearing. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to replace axles. All right. At this point in time, you have to remove the side frame. The side frame has to come off to remove the axles. Now, USA Train shows that you need to take off both side frames. I have found a way that you only need to take off one and you can sneak them out. It saves a little bit of time. On this particular locomotive design, there's three side screws that you need to take off. One, two, three. All right, now we're going to take off the side frame. We took our three screws off that I showed you. One, two, three. You'll need a screwdriver about that size Phillips had to do it with. Then you're going to just simply remove the side frame off and just sort of let it hang. It's just that simple. Alright, we're going to go ahead and remove the motor block over a little bit. And see, you can sneak the axle out like so. Right now, uh, I'm inspecting the gears and I'm looking for splitting. Um, splitting, the gear splitting is very common on a traction actual for the USA Trains locomotive. 
as you can see right here the gear split so in essence what happens is this wheel will eventually start slipping inside here and will not gain any traction so this this wheel will be the only one turning alright so here's an axle I took out of my F3 you're not supposed to be able to do this and that's because you can see it's split. So why is it common for USA Trains um, axle to split? Well the most common one to split is the uh, the traction axle because uh, it can't slip and therefore if you um, decide to go down the wrong end of the track and it's a dead end track you don't stop in time it comes to a complete stop splits it um, also if you're pulling trains that are way too long for the single locomotive and the axle can't slip it actually will break as well and the last thing is just plain age this locomotive was purchased in the year 2000 this is the original axle for this locomotive. 15 years and it's splitting. Uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, those results. Um, like you can order uh, non-traction tires so you'll have slippage but you're going to need to add weight inside the locomotive because the USA Trains locomotives are too light. Um, to take the traction tires out and have traction. They gotta have weight added to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this back in. But before I do, I'm gonna show you uh, show you uh, something here. Oh, God, there it is, it's focusing. Alright, so you'll see these copper flanges. They're, very, they're square. These are here for a reason. These flanges have to fit inside of the USA Trains truck. So that copper flange I showed you has to fit inside this this lip. At the same time you gotta get the axle and lay it down on top of this uh, contact spring so you got two things work against you You gotta get the flange correctly inside here inside this little groove alright so when you install this flange into the to the slot I showed you it has to go in flat down like a square so when you seat this it's going this is going to be flat across on the uh, USA trains two axle motor block now you can see why I leave the uh, the one truck frame in place because it helps you hold tension on the axle up against the uh, contact spring and you can see the flange has to be flat across and inside that slot. Now if you've done this all correctly, you should be able to take this cover and it should sit flat. Now if there's any gaps across this uh, across this flange, you've done something wrong. Now I'm not going to lube it up at this time because i got to take it back apart anyway after I order parts. So if it's not sitting flat, which is not in this case, what you might have to do is uh, see it's not sitting correctly. So you got to play with it a little bit. 
Alright, I got the cover on. Now I gotta verify there's no gaps on either side. If you have gaps, one of these flanges are not installed correctly or the gears are not meshed right. If you try to force it in, you're only gonna break it. Um, to verify it that it's definitely correct, try and move the uh, axles if they don't move then you're you're pretty much flat all the way around you're good to go to put your screws in okay we got our cover on back on like I said um, previously um, we would grease it up with some type of um, white lithium grease a real light grease you don't want to use anything too heavy because it's just as damaging as if you don't use um, none at all um, I would have put it in there, but um, I have to order axles for this locomotive, so I'm not going to put it in. Uh, maybe I'll do another video and show you how I leave it up. And once again, when you're now I have this apart, you can see a little bit better, more better here. This is what wears out. You're supposed to be putting oil. In between these contacts so oil gets in this part right here all right, that's uh, all that is is a little steel bushing and if you don't oil this it's gonna wear out so you're supposed to put oil in between these contacts so it gets in here and gets that dirt out uh, that's something you should really be doing if you're doing a lot of running quite often if you're especially if you're outside all right so we're ready to uh we're ready to reinstall the the side truck frame Alright, we got the side frame reinstalled. So, uh, the next question is, is, how do you suspect you got a cracked gear? Well, it couldn't be easy. Um, if, if you're operating it down a track and you're seeing any wobble, in other words, if this, if this is going up and down a lot, and you see a lot of wobble in this area here, you can suspect that uh, if it's doing this a lot, you can suspect that gear is cracked. Um, that's what I found out, that these, these will wobble once the gears are cracked because it's losing traction and, and then the axle can't stay true and straight so now the axle's wobbling around inside the motor block. It's not good to run them with a broken axle because it can wear out the, uh, the truck side frames very badly. Okay, and that's your lesson for today. And once again, I'm going to say it one more time. Everything I showed you on this USA Trains GP9 also applies to the F3A, F3B, GP7, GP38-2, and GP30. They all use and share the same common motor block, motor, and axles. And uh, which makes it really nice because uh, it's just the one simple common part that can be stocked for all the trains. Okay, I got my USA Trains GP9 back up on the shelf, waiting for parts. Going to order parts today. A lot of people ask me, um, where can you buy parts for USA Trains? Uh, you can do that at Charles Rose Supply in Malden, Mass. Give them a call and uh, ask for Mike and Parts. 
and he's the best guy that can handle anything that you need parts wise for USA trains. He knows the parts like the back of his hand and he's very helpful. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for hanging out with the USA TG Scale group. My name is Sean and I founded the group back in 2013. I've documented everything USA Trains and Road Trains has made from 1987 to current. Got any questions? Uh, just uh, give me a shout. Thanks a lot. Bye.